Welcome back to the Lost in Transit podcast, everyone. I'm your host, Spud. Uh, this will be the first podcast of 2019, so I would like to start this off by just saying Happy New Year, everyone. So I've gotten a lot of questions lately about how I afford to travel, and, well, I guess I'd go into it a little bit. Outside of my job, which involves travel, well, I make travel a priority. I don't go out and drink. I don't go out and smoke. I put all of my money towards traveling or coffee. But hey, coffee's great when you travel. So that being said, uh, I wanted to go over a handful of I wanted to go over a handful of things that I do to put money aside so that I can travel. So first, first it all starts with my daily spending. Um, I try not to spend any money that I'm not getting some sort of reward back. So if I'm using my credit card, I'm using my Delta Sky Miles credit card or a Chase, a Chase Sapphire card, which they both give me rewards towards travel. The Delta, the, the American Express is Delta Miles, the Chase's specific rewards that I can book through Chase. If I'm spending money on my debit card, I've set up an app that stashes X amount of money aside. And oddly enough, it's not called Stash. It's an app called Capital. I have them round up every transaction that's made to the next third dollar. And in a little over a year and a half, I've put away a good chunk of money on that. Um, so that being said, those are some easy ways to do it. Uh, I've also I've also pinched pennies and kept my change in a jar. Once upon a time, I used to get paid in cash, and I would take twenty dollars every time I got paid, and I would get twenty dollars worth of quarters and immediately put it in a piggy bank, just so I could have money to travel. What you should look for, probably. I was talking to my girlfriend about this today. Um, what she looks for, and she's still kind of new to traveling and things, is she looks to spend approximately $100 a day. Her logic was, with transit, lodging, food, any other sort of expense, $100 a day while you're away covers you with a nice cushion. Now, if you're going to be gone for 21 days, it's kind of a lot of money, so it's not really traveling cheap. But you have to keep in mind that those days are padded. You might only need $50 a day. Or if you're staying somewhere cheap, like in a hostel, or if you're couch surfing, you might only need $10, $15 a day for lodging. If you eat street food or you know, something along that same lines, your cost for meals will go down drastically from eating in restaurants. And if you're willing to take public transit, if you're willing to take the bus, or the chicken bus, or a tuk-tuk, or a anything outside of a normal cab, or a Lyft, or an Uber, something that predominantly costs more money, You'll save that way too. I find that I enjoy walking. It takes a lot of time, but you see more of the city. You usually see a different part of where you are than you would if you were to take transit of some sort. And it allows you to just be in it. As far as flights go, there's a number of different ways to do this. If you do the method where you, like I said, with the credit cards and the frequent flyer miles, you can do some incredible things. In December, I booked two round trip tickets from LAX to Shanghai, China for 60,000 frequent flyer miles. 
which since I've already recouped with my flying for work and using my credit card and the total amount of money that cost was $35. That was a massive sale Delta was having, but it was one of those things that you kind of just had to jump on at the time and figure it out later. There are other websites like Scott's Cheap Flights, which is an email service. They will send you daily cheap flights that they find. You can subscribe to it and you will actually receive many more emails from them. Today I received an email from Scott's Cheap Flights. LAX or SFO to Asia. $400 to $500 round trip March through May. And there's a plethora of destinations from both Los Angeles and San Francisco. All of which are under $600. Which, I mean, if that's your bag, that's cheap. LAX to Bangkok. 432. How could you beat that? Like that's a that's cheaper than flying to New York from Portland. So, you just have to know where to look. Google Flights and Kayak are also incredible tools. I use them both very often. When it comes time to booking hotels, I have a tendency to use Airbnb or if I'm going and trying to maybe stay somewhere a little nicer, especially if I'm in Asia. I use Agoda. It's A-G-O-D-A dot com. Uh, you can find some really good deals on there. Uh, the transport, like I said, I take the train everywhere. I try not to fly internally in in countries, especially, especially if I'm in Asia um, or Europe. Unless time is a constraint. But in Europe, there's cheap airlines. There's Ryanair, which is dirt cheap if you're not checking a bag. And But I take the train everywhere. I try and get a train pass. The biggest thing with it, though, is you have to be flexible. I understand that sometimes you only have X amount of days to be there. But try not to, try not to plan your entire trip. Try and kind of plan the beginning and the end and kind of float. Because who knows where life's going to take you. And if you fly into London and you wanted to go to Paris, but tickets to Paris are $200 and you can get to Brussels for cheaper that day. Why not go to Brussels and then try and find a way to Paris the next day or two days later or whatever. The options are endless. You just have to be willing to look and stray from your path. Be flexible. Be willing to be uncomfortable. And just enjoy yourself. It's incredible the things you find out about yourself when you're put in a situation that you normally wouldn't put yourself in. You learn to appreciate so much more when you travel. When you travel over land... And when you actually get to spend time with the people around you, with the culture around you that you're traveling through, as opposed to just flying over and going to the beach or going to a museum or wherever it is that you are trying to go. Anyways, that's enough rambling for me. Please, if you like this or if you have anything else to add, Please comment below. This was just a rough outline of ideas I had and a good sense of rambling. Again, welcome to 2019. This is the Lost in Transit podcast. I will try to continue this podcast weekly. That is my resolution for you people. Coming up in the next couple weeks, I will have a brief little year in review of 2018 while the travel nonsense and situations I got myself into, one of which includes uh, getting hit by a jet ski. Thanks, Jessica. Um, so until next week, get lost. Get lost.